Um, hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth here on YouTube. I want to remind everybody um, that this Friday my guest on a Blog Talk Radio, the Stench of Truth Radio on Blog Talk Radio will be Dave McGowan who is well known for his work on Laurel Canyon and the uh, weird and strange connections and rise and fall of uh, various important members of the music scene and Hollywood as well as the military and intelligence uh, connections throughout that whole scene. Uh, he's also written several books and uh, also did a series on the Apollo missions which um, I find all of it uh, quite fascinating. So if you want to get a history of, um, of uh, the music scene coming out of Laurel Canyon, its connection there, uh, military and intelligence connections to the music industry in Hollywood, as well as possibly some uh, talk on Apollo and uh, what he terms wagging the moon doggy. Join me for a fascinating discussion with uh, Dave McGowan. Uh, that would be 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time on blogtalkradio.com slash the stench of truth. Uh, there is not a lot of news beyond what we have already seen when it comes to uh, what's going on. Uh, the one thing that is worthy of comment is the um, excessive number of very strong tornadoes and storms that have hit the country. The one that hit uh, Joplin, Missouri causing a massive loss of life and uh, virtually destroying Joplin, or at least uh, cutting it in half, cutting it in half as uh, one commentator said. And uh, I know there has been a lot of talk about HARP and its connection to uh, weather phenomenon. And while I do not discount the possibility that HARP um, may be involved in some of this weather phenomenon that we are seeing, I think it is highly more likely that what we are seeing is an increased activity uh, with the sun. And as I have said before, uh, scientists have noted, uh, quite rightly, that the sun is a self-regulating mechanism and when it goes through solar cycles there is a gradual ramping up of activity where you have coronal mass ejections and solar flare activity that will gradually increase to a solar maximum and then decrease and then you have the cycle start all over again. Now what we have seen is this solar cycle uh, has basically just seemed to have stopped and there's a period of calm that was unexpected and that what we are seeing now is the sun is gradually catching up. So we're going to see an increase of this type of activity, these solar storms and coronal mass ejections and this is going to affect the, um, the magnetic sphere of the earth and cause some of this abnormal weather and even possibly contribute to um, earthquakes and the reason why is the massive amount of energy that is going to be entered into the system. So I do not buy the idea of these ionic spheric heaters uh, uh, being the, the culprit behind these storms, although I can't discount it 100%. The other thing that you need to remember is there is a lot of talk about HARP, but nobody talks about the other ionospheric heaters around the world. There are other countries who have this technology, okay? You had uh, uh, Russian scientists talking about uh, creating their own weather and utilizing weather warfare. Uh, there are other countries who are much more uh, low-key about this, but Russia has been one of the more outspoken ones. So. <clears throat> You need to remember, and, and, and don't forget, there, there seems to be this sort of um, uh, focus on HARP and the United States when it comes to the ionospheric heater and the, the uh, implication of HARP in various nefarious activities. And uh, 
it should be noted, and people should take note of the fact that there are other countries who are involved in this technology. So if there is some measure of this uh, uh, atmospheric tampering and the creation and or steering or you know, upgrading of storms to higher categories by some sort of exotic technology, that the U.S. is not the sole owner of this and not the sole user of this technology. So do not be so quick to blame the United States, although certainly they're as guilty uh, as anybody else. If, in fact, this is going on, uh, they certainly would be involved in it. Uh, but there are other countries as well, so don't forget this. It seems as though Syria now is uh, progressing to the point of uh, civil war, practically, where we have actual uh, rebel assaults on various towns and cities within Syria. So, um, keep a close eye on Syria. And uh, I wanted to comment very briefly on Obama's um, actions regarding Israel. And what we have is uh, his initial talk about moving back to the 1967 borders and it's and giving the impression that there is um, uh, this idea within his administration that um, uh, he's taking a hardline stance against Israel and uh, really focused on trying to bring some sort of peace there and a two-state solution. Um, but in actual fact, it's just lip service. Um, he's going to carry on the same policies of all the previous presidents and the United States administration as it stands. Okay, So, uh, you know, I don't read anything into that at all. Nothing. Beyond the fact that it's just a publicity stunt, much like everything that he does uh, when he decides to make any public pronouncement. I also wanted to make a comment about his uh, entering uh, a date on his signing of the guest book at Westminster Abbey, um, where he noted the date, uh, we got the day and the month correct, but he wrote down the year 2008. I just want to note this in passing, and I don't want to put too much emphasis on it, but uh, just think about this. How many people do you know who write the date on anything, no matter what it is, and they're three years off. That is enough in, a, in and of itself, in my mind, to ask, where is his fucking mind? And that harkens back to my previous video where I asked, is he an MK Ultra zombie? But I think ultimately all of this is a trap, in the best words of Admiral Akbar, It's a trap! Yeah, just like the birth certificate issue, just like all of these other things that are coming out about Obama because there's such a scrutiny being placed upon him. You know, the talk about the scars that are visible on his head, writing a date that's three years off, um, his inability to communicate without a teleprompter telling him exactly what to say, his apparent... Um, having no uh, agenda that anybody can really clearly identify until, you know, the final policy is put forward. All of these things are cause for people to wonder and question, but uh, as Admiral Akbar would say, it's a trap! It is a trap designed to bring people in to a, you know, a subset of, of uh, things designed to illustrate that Obama is either, you know, not eligible because he wasn't born in this country or not a natural born citizen, um, or that uh, he's mentally incompetent. And this is a furtherance of some particular agenda here, and I think it's designed perhaps to bring people out of the woodwork. Um, just ask yourself this question, okay? It's quite obvious that the so-called long-form birth certificate that President Obama released is a fake and phony document. It's, it's patently obvious. Um, but you, you also have to ask your question, why would he release a patently false and fraudulent document when he has the best 
people within military and intelligence circles who could come up with a bulletproof document for him. They could, they could create one probably overnight. They could find paper from the period, they could use all of the right things, and they could make it so that it was absolutely ironclad. Why? Why would he release something that is so obviously a mock-up and a fake? And that's the real question. And I think this is done as a trap. So don't fall for it. Because in the end result, there's going to be no solution through the courts. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I guarantee it 100%. No solution through the courts. Okay, so you might as well just forget it. You might want to note it and talk about it and, and, and present it as part of your overall philosophy about what's going on, about the conspiracy, about the, you know, the entire conspiratorial nature of this administration. But, you know, pursuing this in any kind of legal context is pointless because you're not going to get anywhere. That's just the way it is. Um, Finally, on the economic situation in this country, it appears as though uh, we're on the brink of entering another period of recession. And this coming on, well, I shouldn't even use the term recession. I'm going to stop using that altogether because we're still in a depression, okay? And we're about to enter another phase of this depression in which we sink even lower. <clears throat> and the fact that the uh, debt ceiling is coming on as being an issue right now and there is such a focus on the so-called entitlement programs and this is very important okay the progressive budget caucus in the progressive caucus in the house has issued a budget of their own okay which is a legitimate answer to what's going on with the economy uh, you know, it's a great place to start, but nobody even talks about it. Now, the Democratic leadership has not even come out and said anything. The only thing they stand for is supposedly being opposed to Paul Ryan's destruction of Medicare and his passport to killing grandma. Uh, but the fact that they are completely silent on any budgetary proposal themselves is a clue to exactly what you're going to see and that is the prediction that I've made time and time again and that is that the Democrats under Obama will in fact embrace a destruction of the entitlement system in this country and remember these are not entitlements you understand they are not entitlements they are things that you pay into they're a government run program that provides a service that you have paid for okay and for anybody who wants to think about the, the debt and, and how to tackle these issues, one has to embrace the idea that people who are freeloaders are corporations on Wall Street. And remember that that needs to be the focus of anything that is going on. When it comes to naming names, one only has to look at Goldman Sachs to see a principal and primary player in what's going on here. They're involved in the Federal Reserve, they're deeply entrenched in Wall Street, and they also own a large amount of stocks in oil companies and other major players within the uh, United States and around the world. So, then you also look, because of the revolving door policy between corporations and the government, how many Goldman Sachs former employees are within the Treasury Department and other ancillary agencies in the government that have to do with the administration of money and finances. And that is one area right there that needs to be tackled when it comes to uh, trying to restore any kind of sanity to this government and the idea that government is to work for the people not for corporations, not for Wall Street, and not for the enrichment of the already rich. So tax increases have to be enacted on the rich and corporations. And for those of you who still don't get it, who talk about the high corporate tax rate in this country, that tax rate is totally irrelevant. It doesn't have anything to do with reality, you understand. Because 
the effective rate, what these corporations actually pay, is so much lower that it is quite on a par with other countries that supposedly are enticing these corporations to come to them because of their lower tax rate. So that is a completely erroneous argument. And as far as job creation, well, we have seen how the utter and complete bankruptcy and fucking failure of these tax cut programs for the wealthy has been in job creation. It's a totally bankrupt policy because it doesn't reach where jobs are. And what we have seen is a hoarding of cash by firms like Goldman Sachs and other banks as well. So, it's a totally bankrupt policy. It doesn't work. And the fact of the matter is that when it comes to unemployment, that has to be that has to be a key focus of any kind of recovery efforts because there is no such thing as a recovery or a coming out of depression without employment. And because there is no you know, focus being placed on tackling the jobs issue and there doesn't seem to be any interest in it by anybody because they are all focused on how they can rip off middle class, the seniors, and the poor even more in an attempt to cut the deficit, which has been largely created by giveaways to the rich and corporations and the wars. And until there's a focus on that by this government, and until the people rise up and protest against it, that policy is going to keep going on into the future, and it is a total and complete failure and totally bankrupt. This is a corporate controlled government. It's a fascist government of corporate control of the government. And that is why you do not see the addressing of any policy towards the people. And you won't until the people decide to exercise their power and demand that this change. So, just some thoughts for today. Thank you. Good day.